Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Yaqat Zaman, and here's another introduction to a book. So, someone's uh, requested that I do a little intro on the book Taqrib at Tahzeeb. Now, this is a very famous book when it comes to Ilm al Rijal. Let me just give you a little understanding of Ilm al Rijal. Now, if you imagine you have a timeline and this timeline is basically from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu So let's say from zero Hijrah all the way till in today's time, 14, you know, hundreds. This is the obviously the Islamic calendar. Now, what happened in history was that people were very particular about the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much so that they would um, memorize the people that used to narrate the narrations. So you'd actually have... A statement and then each statement would have let's say a companion who narrated it who narrated it to a a tabi'i follow of the companion who narrated to a taba tabi'i to a etc etc so what used to happen was people used to actually uh, preserve not only the statement of the hadith as we call it but they would also memorize who narrated it each and every single individual and then came the point where they would actually critically analyze each narrator. So after the Sahaba, they would critically analyze each narrator just to make sure that this narration is valid. It's up to scratch that we can accept it, we can act upon it. Otherwise, if there's someone who is a, has a tainted history or you know some, some sort of a bad record or anything, and uh, you know all of this can be studied in Usul Hadith if you're interested in that, then the narration is not acted upon. Anyway, so what happened was over history, what, what, what used to happen was scholars began to compile. So let's say, imagine this is 100, 200, 300. Um, sorry for the bad writing, guys. But uh, inshallah, I'll get used to using the, the pad. So these are the hundreds. Now what happened basically was over the years, scholars began to work actually I've, I made off scale so let me just delete that bring that all the way over to here so let's say it's up to there so you had the famous books of hadith the famous books of hadith now there is a misconception that people think oh books of hadith were written like Imam Bukhari came over here and put B for Imam Bukhari came over here and then like Imam Muslim he came over here so M is over there and Imam Tirmidhi came over here and Imam uh, Abu Dawood came over there and Imam um, the, Ibn Majah uh, came over there and Nasai. So even though these scholars did come later on, the chains have always existed. So all these scholars did basically were they compiled hadith in a systematic way uh, and recorded the chains all the way to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, that's what they did. Okay, so that's a little overview of narrations. And inshallah, I'll make a video on in more detail on this topic of narrations and how it was recorded over history and the scholars. Because these are just a handful of scholars who compiled it. There's actually more, many, many more scholars, hundreds and hundreds of scholars who actually were compiling the narrations in book form way before these guys. So that's just something I thought I'd give you a bit of a uh, an overview of anyway so basically what happened was these six books these are six major books of hadith Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Ibn Majah, Nasai, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood so uh, along came a scholar in in the 600s over here he lived about over here his name was Al-Maqdisi, Abdul Ghani Al-Maqdisi okay, Abdul Ghani Al-Maqdisi and he wrote a book called Al Kamal. I'll write in English. Kamal. This was the name of his book. Al Kamal. Now, Al Kamal was a book which was kind of one of its kind at that time. Pioneering book. Other books were written before that. Many, many books. But this was a very good book because what this had done is taken all these six books, all these six books, and every single narrator in these six books, what he tried to do was try to list a catalogue of their status in other words whether we can accept them whether we can't accept them 
Right, that's what he did. So a whole big book, catalog, and he listed from Alif all the way to Ya, the names of narrators. Now let me give you an example. Um, this is a book known as uh, Sunan Abi Dawood. Right, now if I was to go, let's say somewhere in the middle. Um, okay, over here. So you can see this. So this has a hadith number for, uh, 791. And then it has these chains. So this chain basically means this, that the author of this book heard this hadith from this person here, Musa ibn, let me just put the pen on, uh, Musa ibn Ismail, and uh, he heard this hadith from Talib bin Habib, he heard this hadith from Abdul Rahman ibn Jabir, he heard this hadith from Hazm ibn Abi, Ubay, ibn Abi Ka'b, and he heard this from uh, uh, Ma'ad ibn Jabal. Okay, so the narrator actually has a chain all the way till this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he says, Wa huwa yusalli biqawmin whilst he was praying with people, Salat al-Maghrib, Maghrib Salat. فَقَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Ya Mu'adh, لَا تَكُنْ فَتَّانًا O Mu'adh, don't become a means of tribulation for the people. فَإِنَّهُ يُصَلِّي وَرَاكَ الْكَبِيرِ Because behind you pray the elderly, the if, the weak, the al-hajah, those who have needs or musafir and travelers. So basically he told him, when you're an imam, when you're leading salat, then make sure you pray salat in a moderate way without making it too difficult upon the followers behind you. So this chain has actually been recorded by Imam Abu Dawood with all these people. Now, uh, okay, uh, so these are the three narrators. These are the Sahaba here. Yeah? So these are the three narrators. And let's say, for example, you want to look for Musa ibn Ismail. Is he a valid narrator? Is he a weak narrator? Talib ibn Habib. Is he valid? Is he weak? So the way you do that, is that you go to the book Tahzib uh, or, or Kamal and you'll actually find in there the name of this the narrator and you'll find a biography of him, short biography and what scholars have said scholars from here okay, all the way up to here or maybe even less than that depending so you, what, what scholars have said about this person if they're valid, if they've had a good record, a bad record, good memory, bad memory etc etc and you can actually uh, identify the classification of this hadith okay so some books are classified according to everyone as being sahih authentic for example these two books Bukhari and Muslim but some of them actually aren't yeah so the other four books there's hadith in there which may be sahih which may be weak etc so this is what Imam Al-Maqdisi has done now the problem with the book was it was long it had many things in there which were not really relevant for many students. So, uh, another scholar came along in roughly about this era. Okay, and his name was Al-Mizzi. Okay, Al-Imam Al-Mizzi, who is famous scholar of Hadith, father-in-law of uh, Imam Ibn Kathir. You might have heard quite a lot of things about him. So anyway, he's got many books that he's written. And one of them, what he did was he took this Kamal. And he he refined it. Okay, so he called his book Tahzib Kamal. Tahzib al Kamal. Okay, so he's refined that book. He unfortunately he didn't complete it, but at that time another scholar was about by the name of let me give another colour to him. Al Hafid al Mughal Ta'i. So Mughal Ta'i and he took this book and he completed it eventually reaching 13 volumes Ooh, 13 volume book Imam Mughal Ta'i has, has completed from Mizzi's book and then Maqdisi's book now obviously that's something which is quite difficult to be able to uh, read for every so Imam Zahabi comes along in this era as well Imam Zahabi and he shortens it he makes it very brief makes it short so that people can benefit from it more easier so it becomes Mukhtasar version Mukhtasar version of it is made and then many other scholars come and they do work on on one of these or 
So, but what I want to show you here is the book that we're going to be looking at today, and that is Tahzib uh, al Kamal. So, there was a scholar in this era by the name of Ibn Hajar. So, Imam Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he came along. He's taken Imam Mizzi's. Let me speed this up. So, Imam Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he comes along and he's roughly in the 800s and he takes this book that's been written by al mizzi and then completed later on by others and uh, he's basically sort of like trying to condense it so he calls this book tahdeeb at tahdeeb tahdeeb at tahdeeb now this is not the book that we're going to be looking at today um, but this is basically the kind of like shortened version the abridged version from the 13 volume one he just summarizes it into six volumes um, and he's added some extra things in there as well, which which he found missing in the original works. But people are still finding the six volume one a bit too long. So what he does is he writes a shorter version than that, which he calls a taqrib of the tahdeeb. So taqrib is like to make it uh, more accessible, to make it closer. So this is in simply just one volume. It's like a handbook, and it just simply just gives you the name and the, the grading of the narrator as we're going to see uh, a bit later on um, so it's, it's, it's kind of different from the previous one where the tahdeeb but tahdeeb actually contains more details of the narrator themselves and uh, this one simply doesn't mention any details just tells you what's the ruling of these so um, kamal right you know he kind of writes the original uh, so kamal tahdeeb is the original book by the maqdisi and then you got Mizzi comes along and he does work on it, calls it Tahdeeb al Kamal. And then Mughal Ta'i comes, completes it, Dhahabi and others as well. And um, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah actually comes along and he just writes down Tahdeeb, uh, Tahdeeb, and then Taqrib al Tahdeeb. Alright, so I hope that makes sense. And that's the book that we're concerned with at the moment. This is the version that I've got in front of you guys. You can see it here. Okay, there's other versions out there as well, but I've just chosen this one just to show you how it works now there's just two things you need to understand about this book before you actually know how to use the book uh, the first is that he uses his own specific terminology so what he's basically done if I actually go into the page so basically what he does he categorizes each narrator that he's collected in this he's categorized them uh, into 12 categories so you can see this al awalu the first is the Sahaba so wherever a Sahabi's name will come he'll just say Right, this guy's a Sahabi. Number two is those people who have been uh, authenticated as reliable, the highest level of reliable narrators after the Sahaba. So he uses terms like awthaq uh, and nas, or he repeats a word, thiqa, thiqa. Okay, so he uses that, that. That's a sign that this guy's like top of the table. Uh, third, he uses another word which is thiqa. So he uses it once, or thabat or adal. This shows like number two on the table. Number four, he says a person who's slightly less than that. So he'll say, Saduq, la ba'sa, laysa bihi ba's. All of these indicate that these people are reliable, but it's just that the level of reliability varies. Fifth, he uh, is for a person who's lower than the fourth level. So he'll say, Saduqun sayyul hif. So he's Saduq, he's a very truthful person, trustworthy person. Sayyul hif, his memory wasn't that reliable as the previous ones. But it doesn't mean that his memory was like ours, that we forget things, we can't remember what we had last night. So their memory is very good, but for their, relatively speaking, it's like that. Or some of these words. Number six is, uh, he uses the word maqbool, accepted, haythu, yutaba', that other mutaba' narrations are sought to strengthen him. Number seven is mastur, means unknown, we don't really know much about him. Yeah, so he might be good, might be bad. Number eight, uh, if he mentions something like da'if, weak. Okay, and if you studied usul hadith, you'll know that da'if does not necessarily mean that the narration is absolutely uh, written off. It, all it means is that this is a specific terminology that's used. Okay, number nine, majhul. Right, this is like uh, less than weak on the table. Number ten, matruk. He's left, his hadith isn't taken. Or Saqit. Number 11, Kathib or Uttuhim al Kizb. He's been accused of lying in his life, just generally lying in society. And number 12, this guy's a liar in hadith, he's a fabricator of hadith, the worst type. 
So these last few types are the types where the hadith actually loses its value. The chain loses its value and the hadith is not accepted according to scholars. So these are the 12 kind of categories that he puts the, all the narrators into. And then he has, uh, that's the first thing. And then he has the second is the uh, letters that he uses. So he uses certain uh, acronyms or letters, letters sorry, uh, to signify which book the narrators appear in. Okay, so let me just give you an example of some of these and then I'll show you what letters represent what books. So for instance, uh, right, have a look at this here. So you have here the word in Arabic tamiz, tamiz, tamiz. So that has a certain signific significance. You have ta and qaf. So Al Hussein ibn Mahdi ibn Malik. He has a ta next to his name, a qaf next to his name. So I'll, I'll explain to you what the ta represents, what the qaf represents. And remember all of these, these words, these acronyms that he uses here. What they basically mean is that this narrator narrates hadith which are recorded in these particular books. Okay, so the Dal, Ain, Sin, Hussein ibn Maymun, uh, Kha, Ta, Mim, Four, the letter Four represents something as well. Not this in brackets three, that's just to show um, the uh, little footnotes about this. So if you look down the footnotes, yeah, that just shows that. Uh, so you have three columns here. The first column is the catalog number or the narrator number in this book. And then you have the the acronyms which represents which books they're mentioned in and a uh, short biography of the narrator and it's very very short he's written it like i said he's abbreviated he's abridged it or abbreviated it from two or three books so it's very short okay so that's basically what you have and if you look in this book you'd actually see if i go right to the end you can actually see over eight thousand nine thousand people that have been mentioned in this book okay so that's the first thing so there are two things that you need to remember now the narrators are listed from alif all the way till ya and then after ya you actually have uh, narrators according to their kunyas abu and um so all the abus come and then you have the the ibns and the ums because sometimes in chains narrators are listed in that fashion okay so Okay, that's that. So let me just give you a little um, a key to the acronyms. First of all, let's start off with Bukhari. Now, Imam Bukhari has several books that he's written. Uh, so what he does, he actually mentions six of those books. Okay, so if he says Kha, that means it's in his Sahih collection. The Sahih collection is the famous Hadith book that most of us no. If he mentions Kha and Ta together, then that means that this is actually in Sahih Bukhari, but it's Mu'allaq, it's in the headings, one of the headings. If he mentions uh, Ba, Ha, okay, then, or Ba, Kha, sorry, Ba, Kha, then that means it's in Imam Bukhari's book, the Adab, Adab al Mufrad. If he mentions Ain Kha, Ain and then a Kha next to it. Then that simply means it's in Imam Bukhari's book called Af'al Al-Ibad. If he mentions Ra, it means that it's in a book called uh, Juz al Qira'a. And if he mentions the letter Ya, Ya, then it simply means it's in a book known as Juz'u Raf'ul Yadain. So those are the acronyms for Imam Bukhari. So if you were to look through the book, if you were to look through the book and you find, for example, Kha, okay, so that means Sakhar ibn Juwayriya, right, that's his name, Abu Nafi' is his nickname, Mawla Bani Tamim, uh, he was Mawla, he was uh, someone who accepted Islam at the hands of Bani Tamim. Or ex-slave of theirs, according to what Mawla means. Qala Ahmad, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says, he's a thiqa thiqa, remember the double? That's second in the list, out of the twelve. Qala Al-Qattan, Yahya ibn Sayyid Al-Qattan says, ذهب كتابه ثم وجده فتكلم فيه لذلك من السابع. He actually considers him 
in group 7 so Kha is mentioned over there and you have Bakh like we said okay so uh, Bakha means it's in Adab al-Mufrad okay Bakha and like that other right as well let's see if we can find anyone else any other okay Khata is there so it means this is Mu'allaq Sadaqa ibn Abi Imran Kufi is in Bukhari but it's in Mu'allaq form and Qadi al-Ahwaz he was the judge of the city of Ahwaz Saduq so that's quite high up in, in the list third uh, Min al-Sabi'ati okay from the seventh from the seventh actually means another 12 categories okay I didn't mention that to you but you can look it up in the introduction so according to the scholars there's seven categories Oh, sorry, 12 categories of uh, narrators like Imam Bukhari and, and, and these guys are at the end. All it just simply means is with regards to the timeline. So, further you are from the timeline, the further you go, and it goes back up to here. Up to here. So, the further you go from the timeline, the more, you know, the, the, the lower you are in the, in the list. Starts from the Sahaba who are number one, and then Tabi'een, Senior Tabi'een, Taba Tabi'een, and it goes all the way. So it's just a, t a, a table for the timeline, that's all it is. It doesn't mean that their status is, is different, it just means that. So let me just quickly show you this uh, other table. So Ahmad Tabaqat, these are called the Tabaqat. So top of the list are the Sahaba, they come first in chronological order. Then Kibar Tabi'een, the senior Tabi'een like Ibn Musayyib. Then the middle Tabi'een like Hassan al-Basri. Then you have the Tabi'een that come after them like Imam Zuhri. Okay, so there's number four, and then you have number five, the small tabi'in, the junior tabi'in, um, like for example, al-A'mash, and then you have those who are at their time, uh, uh, and they haven't met any of the Sahaba, like Ibn Juraj, and then you have those who are the followers of the tabi'in, the senior ones, like Imam Malik, Sauri, then you have the middle ones, like Ibn Uyayna, then you have the ones that came after them chronologically, or the Atba'a Tabi'in, the young ones, like Imam Shafi'i, Harun, or Yazid ibn Harun. And then you have the uh, the senior ones who took from them, um, um, like Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And then you have um, number 11, the those middle ones after them, like Imam Bukhari. And then you have the 12th group for Imam Tirmidhi and others so as you can see these 12 are actually in chronological order okay so the chronological order and they don't have anything to do with whether they are weak or strong it's just to do with where they came and who they took from and that's very important uh, sometimes you want to know if one narrator has taken from another narrator or not you know time frame and all that okay so um, that's in Sahih al-Bukhari and then there's a list for Muslim as well and Abu Dawood and then there's for Tirmidhi and Nasai okay so I won't make all of them uh, I won't list all of them what I will do is I'll just show you a uh, a brief uh, image of it so you guys can pause the screen and you can use that and inshallah maybe that will be useful to you so here they all are so you can take a an image of this, a screen image if you want. Uh, try to fit them all in. Okay, these are them. So these are the different books that so the six or the six major scholars who are Bukhari, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Muslim, Abu Dawood, and Ibn Majah. And there are various other books which some of you may be familiar with, some of you may not be familiar with. Okay, but those are the books and those are the, the acronyms which are mentioned in the book. Now, besides these, I just want to mention another acronym which he mentions. If he says the letter Ain, Ain, it's an Ain shape, then what he means by that is it's mentioned in all six books, all six Sahih books or Hadith books. Yeah, meaning Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, etc. If he mentions four, now four is, see I should have written Ayn a bit different, but four is basically like this, like a zigzag, yeah, four. So if he mentions four, what that means, it's mentioned in the four books of Sunnah. 
Um, so Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, uh, Ibn Majah, and Nasai. Okay, so in these four books, it's mentioned. It's not mentioned in. It's not mentioned in Bukhari or Muslim. So that's if he mentions that. And finally, just one more word that he uses. He sometimes uses the word tamiz. Now, tamiz simply means to distinguish. And the reason he mentions this is because that particular narrator that he mentions next to is not in any of these books. So he's not in any of the books or six books that I mentioned. So why does he mention his name? His name is mentioned so that people don't get confused with a narrator in this book. So let me just give you an example of that, how that works. So let's say you had, let's just find one here, a few early on. Um, here's one, Salih, let's get a pen, so it says here, Tamiz, Salih bin Mismar Basri, Sakan al-Jazeera, Maqbool, Qadim, min al sabiati So his name is mentioned, so you don't get his name mixed up with... This guy's name, because he is also Salih bin Mismar, but he's Sulami. And he is mentioned, or his narrations are mentioned in Muslim and Tirmidhi. But this guy here, Salih bin Mismar Basri, he is not in any of the books. His name is similar, so don't get them confused. This guy is a uh, Saduq, and this guy is Maqbul. So this is high on the list, this guy is low on the list. So just to, just to not get confused, he mentions these names as well, which is a brilliant thing as well for finding narrators. Okay, so now what I want to do is I just want to give you an example of how to search for a narrator in one of the books. So remember this catalog, Taqrib wa Taqrib, is primarily for um, studying the books of Siha Sitta, six books. So let's go to Abu Dawood then. We're not going to go to Bukhari Muslim because all the narrators are considered to be um, of the highest level anyway, or accepted anyway. So let's go over here. So let's look for, for example, Musa ibn Ismail. Right, so we want to find Musa ibn Ismail. Is he a valid narrator? Is he? What do the scholars say about him? So we go to the book, Taqrib. We look for the name Musa. We look according to the alphabet. So me. Okay, so Musa bin Dawood. It's going to be higher up then. Musa bin Ibrahim. Um, Musa bin Ayyub, Musa bin Ismail, here is, okay, so here is Musa bin Ismail, and uh, Al-Minqari, bi sukun al-meem wa sukun al-noon, uh, or bi kas al-meem wa sukun al-noon, wa fath al-qaf, Minqari, that's how to pronounce it, so he brings that as well, to correct pronunciation, Abu Salama, uh, At-Tabood Zaki, bi fath al-muthannat, uh, that's just saying how you should pronounce this. Bifathil Muthannat. So the ta is fatha. Wadamil Muhada and the ba is dhamma. And sukun al waw. The waw is pronounced as sukun. Tabu. And then fathil mu'ajama. The. And the key. So Mashur bi kunyatihi. He's famous with his nickname Abu Salama. That's what he's famous for in the books of hadith. Thiqatun uh, Thabatun. So he's uh, quite quite strong in the list of 12. Quite strong. Min Sigar al Tasi'ah. It's from the show of the Tasi'ah, like I said to you, are the other 12 categories. Not to do with how strong they are or not. Just to do with where they come in the timeline. Wala iltifata ila qawli ibn Khirash. And then he adds a little footnote here and says, You don't need to be concerned about what ibn Khirash says about him. Takalam al Nas fihi. Yeah, that. No, he's criticized. No, no, ignore that. In other words, this is just a statement which is not valid according to the Muhaddithin. And this is when he died. So like this, you guys can have a go. You can get yourself one of the six books of Hadith and you can investigate these if you're into this, uh, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, guys. Uh, if you have any questions at all on on this book or any, any other topic, or you want me to make a video on another book, then inshallah, put it in the comments below. And if I get a chance, I'll make another video. Again guys, Jazakumullah Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah Khair guys, for all of your support. Without your support, I wouldn't have been able to produce
the videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel. And there is so much more that I really want to do. And without the support of you guys who are patrons, generously supporting this channel, I've been able to get myself a camera, which as you guys can see, the quality of this camera, a mic system, software, I've been able to hire an editor. So what do I want to do? I want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners, for intermediate, advanced in the subjects like Arabic and Fiqh and Hadith and Tafsir and Aqidah and all those other things as well. And for this to happen, again, this channel needs support. So if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page, and other things as well that you can visit. So Jazakumullah khair again, guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys. If you guys are interested, please leave us feedback, get in contact with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.